welcome back. Mm, I don't know if I like that one. Welcome back, what do you think of that? I'm always trying to switch up my intro and it just doesn't work for me. Side note, I saw Fifty Shades of Grey this week. Should we talk about it? I think we should talk about it. My best friend dragged me along to see Fifty Shades of Grey a couple days ago because she's just one of those. I'm sure there's tons of you watching right now and you're just one of those and you love the book and you're obsessed with the book and totally have respect for that. Well, I know nothing about the book other than what people have told me just by word of mouth, you know, like on the streets. And on the streets, you're not gonna be, <laughs> like how I'm referring to myself on the streets, like I'm like in dark alleyways, like getting information about Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Anyways. People don't really tell you the whole thing about Fifty Shades of Grey when you're just casually like eating lunch. They're just telling you like the cliff notes and the basics. Like, oh yeah, this billionaire, he's like so amazing and he falls in love with Anna and I was like, totes. So I thought that I was gonna go see a movie about some billionaire dude who's like super young and successful who falls in love with this sweet, beautiful, innocent Anna and whines and dines her and treats her like a queen and then, you know, after a period of time, lets her know that he's into some freaky stuff. And I was like, okay, I'm down with that. Whatever, make it work. I'll go see it. So I was not expecting and in any way prepared for what went down in that movie theater. It started off and me and my friend were like, dun 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 dun, dun dun And all of a sudden, I'm like, okay. Thank God I was with my best friend because nothing can make me feel uncomfortable with her because like, hello, we're best friends. But there were like, <laughs> oh my God. The thing that killed me and the thing that ruined this experience <laughs> was the fact that I literally had two like grown men sitting right here. Like I'm talking right here behind me, two grown men just sitting there watching the movie and I was so uncomfortable. They're the only men in the theater and they're right here behind me. And so things start getting steamy up in this theater and I'm just like, I'm not kidding when I tell you I spent 70% of that movie lying down in my seat because I was so uncomfortable with the men behind me and when I would like turn around my shoulder to like look really quick, they'd be like direct eye contact with me and I was like, oh God. Everyone else is probably watching this video right now like Jacqueline, grow up. But seriously, when you go to a movie like that not knowing that any of that's about to happen, it's very like, oh, a little traumatizing. But I will say on that note, I cannot wait for the second movie because it left me hanging and I was like, why? Anyways, so back to makeup. Today I'm going to be doing the look that I'm wearing right here. I am using my <laughs> Jaclyn Hill Favorites palette by Morphe Brushes, which is right here if you guys have not seen it. So this is the most highly requested video for me currently is to do an eyeshadow look with this palette. So I've been asking you guys, I asked you my video, I've been asking you guys in comments, I've been asking you on Twitter like what you wanna see exactly. And surprisingly, so many of you have been asking for me to do a warm smoky eye with this palette, which makes sense because there's so many warm colors in here. And I can't remember what video it was that I posted a couple weeks ago where I was wearing this look and I had so many comments from you guys asking for a tutorial on that look. And I don't think I mentioned in that video that I was wearing all shadows from this palette. So I figured that's what I would do today. I absolutely love this look. I am using all my favorite shadows from my favorite palette to create this look today. So like I use like my top five favorite shadows from this palette, which hello. Obviously, these are my favorite. Like, they're all like just warm, cranberry, just yumminess. I know it's a warm, smoky eye, and I know some of you give me hate sometimes, or not hate, but just, you give me a hard time because I love my warm colors, but you know what? Today, I felt like I'm doing me. I'm gonna do what I love, I'm gonna have fun, I'm gonna show you guys my favorite look from my favorite palette, and we're gonna have a good time. Um, also, with that being said, this palette is going to be coming back in stock very soon. Morphe was expecting it to, to be back in stock by now, but it's an issue with it being shipped to them. So right now, it's a little bit of a delay, but not long. They're hoping to have it by the very end of February, but it might be an extra week or so. Don't hold me to it. Like this is, I have no control on this, guys. Like just keep that in mind. This is Morphe, not Jaclyn Hill that's producing these, but they are trying their absolute hardest and they will be back very, very soon. I will let you know on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram once they are back in stock. So all of you guys who were disappointed you couldn't get the first time, will have the chance to do it this next time. And don't forget that if you do choose to purchase this palette, Palette, the code Jack Attack in all caps will get you 10% off of this. So I know a lot of people were forgetting to enter that in last time and then they were upset that they forgot about it later. So Jack Attack is actually the only discount code that will work for this palette when it comes back in stock. So I'm done rambling. Let's get into the video. I love you guys and I hope you enjoy. Bye. And pale face. Let's do this. I woke up 
woke up like this. Literally, I did. So, like, don't try to make it cute, but, like, this is reality. So, face it. All right, so my eyes are already primed. I use MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in the shade NW20 to prime my eyelids. And my eyes look so tiny today because I'm so puffy from my allergies. I feel like I'm, like... The first color that I'm going to go in with is this one right here, second down, second from the left. It is a nice, warm, kind of medium brown, so I'm going to be using that as my transition shade. I'm taking that on and what is this, an E40 brush from Sigma. This is one of my favorite brushes for blending, Avi, because I use it all the time. So I'm going to take this color in windshield wiper motions, and I'm going to go all the way from the outer corner to the inner corner. You guessed it. When I go in with my transition color, I always like to go back and forth in a straight line like this to kind of carve out the crease. And then once I've done that back and forth, I then start going in really small circular motions back and forth because that will really take any harsh line and blend it upward. I feel like I need to turn my brightness down so you can see better. Mm, there we go. Uh, give me some. Now I'm gonna go in with this shade right here, which is super similar to this one that we just went in with, but this one is just a little bit darker, so it'll give us just a little bit more dimension in the crease of our eye. This color reminds me so much of MAC Texture, which is one of my favorite shades from MAC. It's actually one of my favorite eyeshadows of all time. That's why I love this color. So again, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna put this color in the crease of my eye, and then once we have it carved out back and forth, I will then start blending in circular, small motions upward. So now I'm going to go in with this color as well. This color, this shade, and this one all are very similar, but it's just like light, medium, and darker. These two colors right here are literally such great dupes for MAC Saddle and MAC Texture, which are like one of my two favorite eyeshadows ever, so I love both of these shades. And with all three of these colors, I'm seriously doing the exact same process. I'm not switching up anything with all three of these colors. I just want to kind of pile them on top of each other because it just gives such a smooth blended look when you're done and just adds a lot of dimension as opposed to just going with one shade and buffing it out. And since you have this palette filled with 28 different colors, like why not use as many of them as you can, right? Now I'm going to be going in with the shade right here, which is just like the most beautiful chocolatey goodness color. I'm going to pick that up on a, what is this? A more Morphe M503. I think this is just one of their new blending brushes that came out and I love it. I'm just going to continuously go back in and pack this on that outer crease and then work it upward and bring it in with the rest of the colors that we have in this upper crease area. Yes, I love this brush. Then what I'll do is go back with this, <laughs> I'm all over the place. I'll go back with the same E40 brush that I started with. And you can take any of these three colors. I'm going to take this one that reminds me of matte texture. And I'm going to go back in windshield wiper motions because this is a huge key in blending is just going over things, especially once you've added dark shades, going back in with a little bit of a lighter shade back and forth just to make sure that all of that is blended together. And so we have no seams. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my favorite color in the palette, and that is this bad boy right here. So taking that color on this brush, I'm just going to put it all over my entire lid. And I am giving myself a lot of fallout right now, and what I mean by that is I'm allowing a lot of shadow to fall out on my cheeks, which I'm okay with. I could go in with less product and that wouldn't happen, but I don't care because I'm not wearing foundation or anything yet, so I'm just going in with a generous amount of product and packing this on, and then I'll clean up that under eye area in a minute. What I will also do with my cotton rounds when I'm cleaning up my under eyes, I'll take it and I'll fold them in half like this so that we have like a line right here. And then I will take that and I will follow it upward and that will sharpen up that eye look that we have going on. So I will just again take this folded and just go upward and then it will sharpen up that eyeshadow like so. Now to finish off the top lid of our eye, I'm just going to put a coat of mascara on my lashes. Any mascara will do for this because... We're not really trying to make them look pretty. We're just trying to darken them so that we can put false lashes on. Oh my goodness, Georgie. <laughs> so you can totally go in and apply false lashes right now, but I'm just not wanting to apply false lashes yet. So I'm going to move on to my face, and then I will come back to my lashes towards the end. I'm going to prime my face using the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water, which I've been, been loving recently. So I'm just going to drench my face in this. I'm going to try this foundation today. I have not used this yet. This is the new NARS, what is this called? All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation. I'm gonna test this out and see how I like it. Let me unzoom you a little bit for this because you don't need to be all up in my grill for my foundation. Ugh, my hair just looks so good today, you guys. 
I'm gonna use a Sigma F80 to apply this foundation and I know nothing about this foundation yet. So I'm just gonna see how it wears on my face. And yes, I know it looks like I'm painting on jaundice, but l understand me, I am not matching my foundation to my face. If I did, it would not look good, I can promise you. I match my foundation to my neck. And a lot of people will make comments about my foundation being too yellow, but listen, this is the color that my neck is. So I'm going to match my neck to my face and when it all comes together, it looks a-okay. I've been excited to try this because it has the word luminous in it and the fact that it's long wearing, I'm looking forward to seeing how this wears throughout the day. I'm not gonna set my under eye area. I'm going to use Anastasia Banana and Mac Pro Emphasize. And I'm just gonna make the, mix those two together. I cannot talk today. I got up really early and I did not get a lot of sleep, so just like, don't mind me. As I set my under eye area with this highlighting powder, I like to go up towards my temple because this will just give more of a lifted appearance to the face. Okay, I'm gonna move on to my under eye area now because I cannot stand seeing myself with like all the shadow on the top of my lid and my under eye totally blank. First, I wanna go in with a pencil brush just like this. And I'm going to go in with really any of these three brown shades that we went in initially. I'm just gonna take this one right here. I'm just gonna take this and go all along that lower lash line. And because this is a very blown out, rounded, smoky eye, I really am not gonna focus on making this too perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to take the E15 from Sigma, the flat definer brush, and I'm gonna go back in with this chocolatey shade. So everything that we use on the top lid, we're now gonna use on the bottom lid. And what I'm gonna do with this color is I'm gonna press it really tight along my lower lash line. And I'm just gonna go back and blend it out afterwards, of course, because anytime I go with the dark shade, I have to go back and blend it out. I'm going to go in with Black Eye Coal, and this is the Ardency In Modster Black Eyeliner. I've mentioned this liner many times before. It is my favorite black eyeliner ever. It is so creamy and rich in pigment. It's amazing. So I'm just gonna line my entire waterline, top and bottom. I'm just gonna let that black eye coal just kind of sit there for a minute and I'm gonna go in and do my eyebrows. The way I've been filling in my brows recently is I start in the inner corner and I make a dark line all the way on the bottom part of my brow and then I just kind of flick upward and then that is it. I haven't been doing much to the top of the brow. I just start at the bottom and flick upward and then that's all. I've been going for a little bit more of a natural brow <laughs> recently. Not natural whatsoever, but just not as bold as I used to fill them in. Now I'm gonna be highlighting my brow bone and the inner corner of my eye, and I'm gonna be using this shade right here, the very first shade of the palette. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that color and I'm just gonna put it at the high point of the brow bone right here. Okay, so now I'm gonna apply false lashes. I'm gonna be using this brand that I got in the mail, and I don't know how to pronounce it, Crown Moetti? I'm not quite sure, but I will list it down below, of course, in my description bar. And they look like this, and they are full, and they are fluffy, and they are voluminous, and this is really gonna give us a big extra oomph on that top lid. I'm sorry, but I just can't talk when I'm applying false lashes. Like, it just does not work. This is what's awkward about doing talk-throughs, because there's some things that I do that I can't talk through, like applying my lashes. I cannot talk while I'm applying my lashes. I cannot talk when I'm doing eyeliner. Like, there's certain things that I cannot open my mouth when I'm doing it because it's just like, it throws me off. I personally think that it's like a must to put mascara on your lower lashes with a look like this because we have such dark va va voom eyelashes on our top lid. I really kind of want to match that and replicate it on the lower lash line as well. Otherwise your eyes can look kind of squinty. Now I'm going to contour my cheeks and I'm going to be using the Kat Von D shade light palette and I'm going to go in with this middle color right here and I'm also using the brush that she sells for this kit as well. I'm going to be using the contour end of the brush and go in with that shade. Okay, so this foundation is not working for me, like at all. It is sitting on top of my skin. Do you see how blotchy everything is? It's, it can't be the contour kit because I have been loving this contour kit. Gosh, I don't know what to do to make this look better. I'm going to apply blush and I'm going to be using MAC Margin, which is one of my favorite blushes ever. I'm just going to apply that to the apples of the cheeks and blend it backward. 
Then I'm going to highlight my cheekbones and I'm going to be kicking it old school with Mary Luminizer by The Balm. I haven't used this in so long and I saw it on my vanity today and I was like, ah, why? I love you. So I'm just going to go in and highlight the tops of my cheekbones with this. For my lips, I'm going to use my favorite nude lip combination ever, which is the Buttercream Lipstick that I created with Gerard Cosmetics. Oh, I just opened up a brand new tube and it's like so fresh. I'm like, yes. I'm gonna go over that with Gerard Cosmetics Shimmer of Hope Lip Gloss. I'm just going to set this with Urban Decay Chill Makeup Setting Spray because God knows we need it. So we are all finished and this is the completed look right here. And I honestly just have to talk about this because typically I would not mention this because I like to only talk about the positive here on my channel. But because I tried this foundation on camera, I feel like I'm just kind of obligated to give my opinion. And I'm just gonna be honest, I'm really disappointed in how disappointed I am by this foundation, if <laughs> that makes sense. I was so excited to try this because it says right here in the title of it, it says weightless, luminous, long wearing foundation. So I was like, yes, it is not making my skin luminous. It honestly feels very dry on my skin. It's clinging and settling in every single little teeny tiny fine line. And when I get up close in the mirror, my skin actually looks kind of old. It looks like I've never seen it before. So. I don't know. And then when I went in with the powder to contour, this foundation just like, like grabbed onto the powder contour and I can not blend it out. So I feel very blotchy, especially right here. Like I'm going to try to like it though. I am going to try to mix it with an oil and cream contour instead. And maybe if I use it with creams, maybe I'll like it better. So we'll see, but let me know how you guys feel about this foundation in the comments down below. If you've tried it, I would love to know maybe those of you with oilier skin prefer it better because I am dry. That could be a reason why it's clinging so much to my skin and like everything. Um, so let me know, let me know if you guys have any tips or if you've liked it or not. And I will wear this for the rest of the day. And if my opinion changes on it, by the time I upload this video, I will put it down in the description bar. I'll let you know if for some reason it starts looking like beautiful in an hour from now, I'll let you know. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love you guys and I'll see you soon.